So in this video, we're going to work with um, rational expressions with complex fractions. And complex fractions just means a fraction in the numerator and a fraction in the denominator. Um, and when you're solving or simplifying complex fractions, um, you're going to end up having two options. Now, I have one of these methods is preferred to me um, than the other, but I am going to show you both. So option one says you're going to find the LCD of each fraction. You're going to multiply each term by that LCD, and you're going to simplify the final answer. Now, this would be not my option one. This would be my option two. It is not my preferred method. Option two is my preferred method, where you're going to basically treat the numerator and denominator like separate expressions. You're going to simplify the numerator by finding the LCD of that one and doing the math or whatever. You're going to do the same thing for the denominator. And once you have a simplified numerator and a simplified denominator, in other words, um, you know, I'll show you what I mean, then you're going to do the stay, change, flip, and solve. So this is my preferred method. I'm going to start with that one. I'll eventually teach you the other one, and then you're going to have to be choose the method that works for you, that you like the best. So let's start by just kind of understanding what complex fractions are. And if you notice here, you look at this and you're like, okay, this is 1 over x all over 1 over x squared. Now, you know that fractions really are division problems. So what this really is, is 1 over x divided by 1 over x squared. So in simplest terms, it's really just a division problem, which you solve by doing stay, change, flip, and then you just simplify. So I know I have an x down here and an x squared, so I can reduce that. And I basically get x over 1 or x, and that's the answer. So these are, you know, pretty straightforward, right? Or this one. This one's kind of the easiest one. Now, if you go to number two and you look at it, again, you kind of consider the same thing. You're like, okay, this is a, the numerator, 1 over x minus 2, divided by the denominator, which is 1 over x squared minus 4. Now, this denominator, this x squared minus 4, can be simplified. In addition to that, it's a division, which I'm going to have to then change to multiplication and flip. So I'm going to do my stay here. I'm going to change it. And now I'm going to flip my this fraction. Now when I flip it, I know that x squared minus 4 is really x plus 2 times x minus 2. It's a difference of squares. So let me do that at the same time. So now I've stay, changed, and flipped. I'm going to cancel the things that they share the factors they share, and I'm going to have an x plus 2 over 1, or just an x plus 2 solution. And so this is the long way to solve a complex fraction problem. You write it out as, you know, you go from fraction over fraction to a division, and then you do your stay, change, flip, cancel common factors, and get your final answer. If there's factoring involved, then you have to do that as well. Now, can I make this a little quicker? I mean, yeah, like for example, I could, for, let's start by, I could rewrite this as one over x minus three and x plus three because that denominator obviously um, can be simplified. It's a difference of squares. And then here, my denominator here is one over x minus three. So instead of writing it as division and then flip it, I could just do multiplication and write the reciprocal of that one. Okay, so again, I save a little step. Now again, what I just did was, again, here's this, what I started with, if I do it the long way. I simplify this to x plus three, x minus three. I change it to a multiplication, and then I flip this one. So I'm at the same place, right? Cancel, cancel, whoops, not that one, sorry. Uh, x minus 3 and x minus 3, and notice I get 1 over x minus 3, and this is also 1 over, oh, 1 over x plus 3, and this is 1 over x plus 3. So I get the same answer, but kind of by taking this one out, sort of, and just multiplying it over here and flipping it, I kind of don't have to rewrite so much. So again, that's another method to make this a little easier. Now, these were pretty easy because the denominators were pretty straightforward. 
Um, they were just basic factors. Now, when you get to like a number four, number four is a little harder because notice you don't just have a fraction in the top. You have an expression with a fraction at the top. And so this is where it gets a little more challenging. So again, um, the method two or option two was to basically simplify the top, basically treat the top uh, as its own thing and kind of solve it out and then go to the bottom and do the same. So, so that method, that's still my preferred method. So what that means is I'm gonna take this two over x minus three in that numerator. And I know first of all that that minus three is minus three over one. And so if I'm gonna just kind of do this math, I know that I need to get my least common denominator, which in this case is gonna be x, right? And so I'm gonna multiply this two by whatever's not underneath it. Now notice it's already over x, so it's gonna stay the same, but I'm gonna multiply this three by x, so minus three x. And so my answer here is going to be my numerator is gonna be two minus three x over x. And so that's what I'm gonna put here. Two minus three x over x. So now I've simplified my numerator. Now I do the same thing with my denominator, right? So my denominator here is, let's say one over one minus one over x minus one. And so again, my least common denominator is gonna be x minus one. So I've gotta multiply this by x minus one. Um, so that's going to be x minus 1. And then I don't have to multiply this one by anything because it already has the denominator of x minus 1. So that's just going to be a minus 1 then. And so my denominator is now going to be x minus 2 over x minus 1. So x minus 2 over x minus 1. And so now I'm ready to kind of now that my numerator has been simplified, my denominator has been simplified, I'm ready to do my whole stay, change, and flip, right? Because again, I, I can do divided by this, which is gonna be multiplied by the reciprocal. So I just kind of save a little step here. And unfortunately, it looks messy, but there's nothing I can do here. None of these cancel the other ones out. So my final answer is actually all of this together. So this one's kind of an ugly problem because again, it doesn't have anything uh, that cancels out of it. Uh, it almost makes you feel like you did it wrong, but you didn't, that is the actual solution. So I'm gonna do a, a couple more of these the way that we've been doing it, and then I'm gonna show you the shortcut that they're talking about or that we were talking about. So again, when I get to this one, notice my numerator is already set and it's, uh, it's already simplified, but my denominator has this fraction. So I'm going to need to take that fraction, x squared over 5 minus 5. Now that I know that's minus 5 over 1, right? And I'm going to have to find an LCD. So the LCD I know is 5. So I don't have to multiply the first term by 5 because I already have 5 there. However, I do have to multiply this second one by five. So it's minus uh, 25, right? So my denominator is x squared minus 25, which again, we know that's x minus five times x plus five, all over five. So what this equals is x plus five over x minus five times x plus five all over five. And again, now I know that I'm ready to do what I gotta do to solve it, right? This was just simplifying that denominator. So I'm gonna do stay, right? Um, I'm gonna change to multiplication and I'm gonna flip this bottom term, so this bottom fraction. So it's gonna be five over x minus five times x plus five. And if I want, I can even make this over one. So I'm gonna cancel the things that are similar and I'm gonna be left with five over x minus five, and that's my final answer, okay? So that is um, that method. I'll try, one, I'll try it one more time. Now here, notice that I don't really have anything to add. The, the numerator is all over the same denominator, and my denominator is over a denominator. Like it's not anything added or subtracted that I have to solve first. So this is just your traditional problem. This is just x squared minus one, over x divided by x minus one squared over x. So what am I gonna do? I'm gonna do stay, 
change and I'm going to flip it. And when I flip it, I know x minus 1 squared is x minus 1 times x minus 1, right? Um, and so now I'm going to come over to here and I'm going to start simplifying. So my x's cancel. And actually, I just noticed that this x squared minus 1 here on the left, this is a difference of squares. This is x minus 1 times x plus 1. So this minus 1 and this minus 1 can cancel. So I'm going to be left with x plus 1 over x minus 1. And that's my final answer. And so, again, I can do all the problems this longer way by simplifying my numerator, simplifying my denominator, and then doing state change flip and finding my final answer. However, there is an alternative method, and I guess this is probably as good a time as any to go over the other one, the option one, right? And in some problems, option one is much easier than in others. So I'm going to start with option one here in this bottom problem. The goal of option one, okay, or the way it said it, is to try to get the, the, the fraction at the top, okay, and the fraction at the bottom, try to get them to have the same denominator, okay? Um, and in fact, this one already has that, right? Um, so you find basically the least common denominator of both of them, and then you multiply, okay, the numerator. Basically what you're doing is you're multiplying the numerator by x, and you're multiplying the denominator by x. In other words, you're, you're multiplying the top and the bottom by the least common denominator of what you want there, of what's there, okay? Now, you might say, well, why would you do that? Well, first of all, if you multiply anything by x over x, it's going to still have the same value. It's just going to look different because x over x technically is just 1. But notice what happens. When I multiply this numerator by x, these x's cancel out, leaving me with x squared minus 1. And when I multiply the denominator by x, it ends up leaving me with just the numerator as well. So this is x plus 1, x minus 1, because it's a difference of squares. This is x minus 1, x minus 1. Cancel, cancel. And notice my answer is just this. Okay, x plus 1 over x minus 1. And so on this one, we didn't really, um, you know, you can kind of see the benefit of it. We'll do some more. Let's try this one here. So what this one here is, is notice that this is your fraction in your numerator and this is your fraction for your denominator. So we're gonna to try to wanna to find a least common denominator that would work for both. And in this case, it's gonna be five, right? Because the, the only denominator we have in this whole thing is a five. So we're gonna make everything, numerator and denominator, end up with a denominator of five. So I'm gonna multiply the top and bottom by that least common denominator, okay? So what that's gonna do is my top is now going to be 5 times x plus 5, and my denominator is going to be 5 times x squared over 5 minus 5. So now we're going to distribute. We're going to get, um, no, we're not going to get that. We're going to get 5x plus 25 in the top. And down here, we're going to distribute. We're going to do 5 times x squared over 5. The 5 is going to cancel. And we're going to get x squared. Then we're going to go again and do 5 times negative 5, which is going to be minus 25. So I'm not really sure why I kind of turned that to this. I probably should have just left it. So I should have left it 5 times x plus 5. In the denominator, I'm going to have x squared minus 25, which is x plus 5, x minus 5, and my x plus 5's cancel. So I know my final answer is 5 over x minus 5. And we get the answer that way. So we'll try these. Um, I think the best time to utilize this method, to be honest with you, the, the option one that I told you wasn't really my favorite, is when the denominators are kind of the same already. I think that's when it's easiest. I think when the denominators are a little different, you know, and you have like your, your LCD is going to be like a combination, I feel like that's when it's not as good, but we'll see. We'll do them both ways. So let's do this one the new way. 
again, we're going to take our numerator and our denominator, and we're going to find the LCD that would work for both fractions. And we realize that that's going to be x. So I'm going to multiply the top by x and the bottom by x. So just to kind of rewrite it, right, so it's a little neater, it's going to be x times 6 minus 5 over x. And my denominator is going to be x times 1 plus 5 over x. And I'm going to distribute this x. So it's going to end up being the numerator 6x minus 5. And my denominator is going to end up being x plus 5. And that's going to be my final answer. I'm done. The top is simplified. I don't have anything. So I did, I did you know, x times 6. When I multiplied these two, my x is canceled and I got minus 5. This was 1 times x, which gave me x. And then these canceled and gave me 5. And that's, that's the answer there. So it really wasn't too bad, right? Um, if I had done that the other way, if I had decided to, you know, simplify numerator and denominator... Uh, let me show you how that would be. I mean, this method's kind of looking easier than I thought, but um, I would take the first one, and I know that I would have to kind of, let me just kind of write the answer here so we know what it is. 6x minus 5, x plus 5. So I would have to take the first one and simplify it. So it would be 6 over 1 minus 5 over x, and that's going to equal, I'm going to make my LCD x, and I'm going to multiply this one by x, and that would stay the same. So again, I would get um, 6x minus, that's terrible. I would get 6x minus 5 over x, and then divided by whatever this simplifies to. So again, I'd get 1 over 1 plus 5 over x. My LCD would be x. So I'd multiply this one by x. The second one I wouldn't have to multiply by anything, so it'd be divided by um, x plus 5 over x. And then I would do stay, change, and flip, cancel, cancel, and I'd get 6x minus 5 over x plus 5. And notice that these two answers are the same. We did them two different ways, but they both worked. And again, I'll do, I'll do two ways for this last one. And then I think I'll just, on the next slide, I'll pick and choose the way I prefer. So this last one, let's do it the way of, let's try to give the top and bottom the same um, denominator, right? So here, I see that my LCD is A times A plus 1. Well, guess what? That's going to be the same uh, LCD for the bottom. So I'm going to multiply top and bottom by A times A plus 1 and a times a plus 1. Okay, and so when I go to do this, right, I'm going to kind of distribute and cancel things, but so I know that when I'm multiplying the first fraction, a over a plus 1, by a times a plus 1, my a plus 1s will cancel, and I'll end up with an a squared, right? When I multiply the second one, the a's will cancel, and I'll have to multiply the 1 by the a plus 1, right? So that's what I'm going to be left with at the top. When I do the bottom, again, when I multiply this a by this whole thing, I'm going to get 1 times a plus 1. And then when I do the second fraction by that, these are going to cancel, leaving me with the a, so it's going to be 1a. And so now I'm ready to kind of just combine. So a squared, I'm going to distribute the 1, a plus 1, all over a plus 1 plus a. So I know my numerator is a squared plus a plus 1, and my denominator is 2a plus 1. And that's my final answer. And so that's using the method where I multiply them both by an LCD that works for both. And then I'm going to just kind of under here, I'll do it the other way. So again, if I take that problem and I have a over a plus 1 plus 1 over a all over 1 over a plus 1 over a plus 1. So if I were to do that and I wanted to do numerator and denominator, I'll work with, let's say, my numerator first, right? So this numerator is going to be here. Um, I'm going to do a over a plus 1 
plus 1 over a, and I know my denominator is going to be a times a plus 1 because that's my LCD. When I multiply this a, I'm going to multiply it by a, so I'm going to get a squared. When I multiply this 1, I'm going to multiply it by a plus 1. And then when I do the denominator, which is 1 over a plus 1 over a plus 1, I know, again, my denominator is going to be a times a plus 1. And again, this one, because the denominator is the same, this method that we did before is probably the best method. However, if we did it the old way, again, the a's would, I wouldn't multiply. Um, since there's already an a at the bottom, I'd multiply by the a plus 1. So 1 times a plus 1. And then the other one, since there's an a plus 1, I would multiply the 1 by just a. And so now I'm ready to kind of simplify my numerator and my denominator. So this, again, is going to be a squared plus 1a plus 1 all over a times a plus 1. And then it's going to be stay, change, and I'm going to flip this denominator. So it's going to be a times a plus 1 in the numerator spot. And my denominator, when I distribute it all, it's going to be a plus 1 plus 1a which simplifies to 2a plus 1. And so now, again, I'm just ready to cancel my common things, a and a, a plus 1 and a plus 1. And I get a squared plus a plus 1 all over 2a plus 1. And again, notice that this matches that. And so you did end up with the same thing. So I guess I would say when the denominators are the same or the least common denominators are the same for top and bottom fractions, then this method, option one, is probably the best. When the least common denominators are different, I probably would say to use option two. So again, when I look here and I see number nine, I notice there's an expression in both and notice that this is the same LCD for both. So this I'd probably use option one. I would just take this whole thing and multiply it to x, take this whole thing, and multiply it by x. Again, if I multiply top and bottom by x, it's like multiplying by 1. So I'm changing the look, but not the value. So when I do this, I'm going to end up getting 2x minus 2, because the 2x, and then for this one, the x's will cancel. right? And then when I do the bottom, again, I'm going to get 2x plus 2. And so now I'm just ready to simplify. I'm going to factor out a GCF here. I get 2 times x minus 1. Here I get 2 times x plus 1. These cancel, and so my final answer is x minus 1, x plus 1. And that was much easier than the other method. Now here, because my denominators are kind of um, different, you know, this one has the x plus 3. This is the x. I don't know. This one I think I'm going to do separately. So I think the first thing I want to do here is do my numerator first. So my numerator is 1 over x plus 3 minus, minus 1 over x. So I know my LCD is x times x plus 3. And so I'm going to multiply this one by x because it's missing from the bottom, so 1x. And I'm going to multiply this one by x plus 3 because that's the one that's missing. So it's going to be minus... 1x minus 3. And when I do the math there, these are going to cancel. I'm going to get negative 3 over x plus x times x plus 3. Okay, so this is going to be minus 3 times x. Oh, no, sorry. That's not what it is at all. So this numerator is going to become negative 3 over x times x plus 3. So that's the simplified version. My denominator is just 1 over x, right? So remember that this problem is going to be a division problem, right? So instead of being over it, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do uh, divided by 1 over x, and then I'm going to do my stay, my change, and my flip. My x's are going to cancel, and I'm going to get negative 3 over x plus 3 as my final answer. And so that's the answer to number 10. Now, once again, if we had tried the other method, so I'm going to erase this. So I want you guys to kind of 
um, see it, I'm going to rewrite the answer kind of over here. Negative 3 times x plus 3. And now let's see how it would work the other way, right? Because I'm not still real sure. Now I'm starting to like the other way better. Now I'm wondering if I should not have done that the whole time. So how about here? I take this and I'm going to make the LCD here x times x plus 3. And then I'm going to take this bottom one and I'm going to make that LCD x times x plus 3. Okay? And I'm going to multiply by that. So when I come over to here, when I multiply this first one, 1 over x plus 3 times x times x plus 3, I see that these are kind of going to cancel. And so that's going to leave me with 1 times x, which is x. And then minus, and when I do the second one, I'm going to cancel the x's, so I'm going to have minus 1 times x plus 3, like that. I'm going to go to my denominator, and I'm going to, this x and this x will cancel, and I'll get 1 times x plus 3, like that. So now I'm ready to kind of do x minus x minus 3 all over x plus 3. And x minus x cancels, so minus 3 over x plus 3. And again, notice, same answer. I don't know which one you're going to like better, I'll be honest with you. I came in kind of liking option 2 the best. And with some of these examples, option 1 actually ended up seeing, seeming easier. So I would practice all the methods, figure out what works best for you. As long as you get the right answer in the end, it doesn't matter which method you choose.